You were jealous. You had a fight. He fell. He hit his head. It was an accident. But his girl is a witness. So you had to shut her up. You don't have the guts to harm her, but you got the money to keep her mouth shut. Yes or no? No! Who is she? And don't give me that crap about your sister because you don't have a sister. I'll tell you... I'll tell you the truth. Good. What's her name? Catherine. Catherine who? She's my daughter. I said I want the truth. She's my sister. She's my daughter. My sister, my daughter. I said I want the truth. She's my sister and my daughter. Keep her upstairs. Go back. My father and I... understand. Or is it too tough for you? Hello, my name's Jeff Northrup. This is Peter Lynn. Welcome to Practical AI. We have a quick one today for you. Peter, um, data, uh, is there an end to the data? Uh, and obviously they'll keep making more data, but they have to, they have to find a time in space or in, in you know, to stop, right. And we're going to, we're going to do train against this data. Um, and ultimately I think you kind of get into this thing where, yeah, there's a lot of data out there, a lot of websites, a lot of documents and whatever. Um, but ultimately, a lot of that data could be manufactured by AI. And then are you creating a problem or is that an opportunity? The answer is no one knows right now. Because so, so there's there's one camp, the people building the GPTs of the world like the idea of using their language models to generate more because to them, that's a that's an end to end process that you don't need to go scrape the web. You don't need to crawl the internet. You don't need to pre-process and filter and do a whole bunch of other manual work to update your data set. But we don't know if that's going to degrade the quality of the model or not, because I mean, you trained it from all the data from beginning of the internet to 2022. Okay. So that's great. But human culture is always changing. We're inventing new words every year. We're inventing new things every year. And it's not like if you just use GPT-generated stuff to refine itself, that that will give you a better model that's less brittle because you're just reinforcing what it already is good at or what it's bad at. Now, do you think that um, in terms of creation, do you think that ChatGPT today, we kind of covered this last week, but do you think ChatGPT today is, has just a lot of stuff memorized. So anything it's creating is just a new order of things. Um, or do you think it's actually creating stuff out of thin air? It's, it's not creating stuff out of thin air in my mind, because I've done experiments where I ask it the same basically the same question but with different wordings like i'll try four different wordings and one out of the four it might get it right but the other three it, it gives you completely inaccurate answers or answers that i don't want that i don't want so that means that one it didn't generalize because if they really truly generalize i can ask it eight different ways and get the same answer the fact that i ask it eight different ways and only one is the answer that i want it means that Oh, okay. So I went down this path in the first version, first prompt, got the wrong answer. I, I changed the prompt and eventually you went down the right path and got the right answer. So that means that to get the right answer, you have to have exactly the right prompt to get the exactly right answer. Is that true in humans though? Or do humans uh, do a better job of, of... I would say humans do a better job. Like okay. if, you, if you ask a, a fourth grader, the same question four different ways like they'll, they'll understand like if you ask for you know when's your birthday 
don't realize like, oh, they're asking me my age. Mm. Or, you know, like if you if you ask, you know, fourth grader, how old are you? Or when's your birthday? They know the thing you're trying to get at is how old are you? Got it. So back at the original question of the AI creating data um, out of the data that it has access to, do you run into a situation where like dogs with hip, hip dysplasia or humans with hemophilia, you end up with like a mutant, you know, um, incest problem, essentially, where it's kind of building off itself and it's becoming less robust it needs outside information in order to be its best. Well, that, so that's the that's reason why OpenAI uses that reinforcement learning through human feedback thing. Because without that part, you wouldn't get the good performance on responding to prompts. So either the first step is like, take the whole internet, train the model so it understands the language, understands some concepts, understands grammar, be it English or German or French, and it has a rough understanding of how to formulate sentences. And then the reinforcement learning is what you use to train it to answer based on a prompt. Because without that part, you don't get the chat part of GPT. Got it. So would, is it possible that the reinforcement learning part of the training could leverage what it's creating out of itself, out of you know, the content that the, that the chat creates. And... Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But the, the downside is you still need a human to score whether that response is good or bad. Got right. It. So that's why on, on the website, when you go up to chat GPT, they have the thumbs down, thumbs up, and the little notes. You can give it hints. Like, actually, that response was not accurate for this reason. And so then... OpenAI is is encouraging users to help improve it for free. <laughs> kind of, but when we talked about our alignment thing, um, if I say how to build a bomb and I keep it down arrow, <laughs> yeah. their guy on the other side's like, don't listen to him, he's crazy. We don't exactly. want people building bombs. So they, they're they probably overwriting everything that, that the crowd is, well, not everything, but they, they can overwrite the, the, what the crowd is offering. Yeah, so OpenAI looks at all the responses, they filter it, and pick out the stuff they want. So it's really a way to, for them to augment what their internal staff are doing to build these data sets to do the reinforcement learning, right? Because like they only have so much money, and there's only so many people. So the only way to get more data to do reinforcement learning is crowdsource it. Well, it'd be interesting to see if you took one of these things and just let it run for a while. Let's see if it like became like a mutant. Well, it, it, it does because a few years ago, Facebook did an experiment where, where they trained a model and then they set up a chat and they had it talk to itself. It ran for a while. Then after a month, it became gibberish. And so then they shut it down. <laughs> what was it building its own language? I did. <laughs> <laughs> and they couldn't understand it probably they understand it they're like what in the world is happening so so they shut it down because it, it started with the language model that was english and just let it run and so there's just two chatbots talking to each other and like over time it just drifted and created its own language and they're like what like we have no idea what the chatbots are saying to each other and did did they have did they have I mean maybe you don't remember but did, did they have um, was their conversation getting smaller and smaller and smaller or was it getting bigger and broader and bigger? It, it didn't say exactly why. It's just that they had done this experiment with language <laughs> models and they went haywire, so they shut it down. <laughs> well, they shut it down probably because they were scared of something. Skynet. <laughs> oh, I think I think it was just garbage. <laughs> Well, that's good. Well, it'll be fun to see um, as, you know, more and more of this stuff gets played out, you know, there's going to be stuff like this that's going to happen. Someone's going to try some of this stuff and we're going to end up with probably mutant GPTs out there that are um, speaking in languages that even J.R. Tolkien couldn't have invented. 
yeah no it's it, that that has happened in the past so it takes a lot of work to make sure it, it stays on the right rails it doesn't go <laughs> off the edge over a cliff it's awesome all right peter good stuff thanks for sharing that and uh we will talk to you later mm -hmm.